Hi, welcome to my next video. This time I wanted to show you how I made this illustration which was made for one of the articles that I write in the Japanese magazine called Hobby Box of Writing Tools. I write there about using fountain pens in my art and this time I needed a picture of a very special fountain pen store. This is a small place located in the Ginza district so actually I can walk there from our house it needs just a small room in this retro building and this building itself is one of retro spots in Tokyo. I went there once before just because I was looking for interesting fountain pen stores and I was charmed by it from the start because the small room was just packed with memorabilia and fountain pens because this store specializes in fixing and selling old, retro and also very vintage and rare fountain pens. So the owner not only specializes in just selling them, but also repairs them and fixes pens uh, for his clients. So this time when I went because of the article, I knew that I will have to just draw the whole store for uh, the magazine. So I took a lot of video and a lot of reference photos trying to cover every little nook and cranny, every corner, which was not really easy because the space was cramped. But based on these photos, I managed to do first a really rough sketch to recreate the space and to decide the perspective and where everything should go to later sketch it again on the watercolor paper but this time putting in all the details that I want to have in the finished picture. So while I trace with my fountain pen all these small details, let me tell you a little story about the picture itself. When I was still in primary school, I got a fountain pen from my grandfather. I knew that it was a nice fountain pen because it was black and gold and it was a Parker fountain pen. I didn't know much about fountain pens, but I knew that this was a good one. I think he got it as a reward or at an event of some kind in 1970s and I think that at that time it was probably still a difficult thing to get in Poland because of the influence of Soviet Union uh, so a pen like this made in England was a big treat I think but when I got this pen already a few years later it was beaten up and it didn't write well. I tried to use it a few times, but it just didn't work well. So I kept it safe, I didn't use it. And what's most important, I didn't try to fix it myself. So I just put it somewhere safe. And recently I was reminded about this pen by something and I asked my father to just send it to me here to Tokyo. I had this idea to try to get it fixed up and then to draw something with this pen and to make an article about this experience. Actually, you have already seen me make an illustration with this fixed pen, uh, the illustration with a train and a bridge that I posted in one of my recent videos is made with this pen. So we managed to get it fixed, uh, but the article, the main part of the article was about the actual experience of having the pen fixed or fixing the pen and making it work. A perfect excuse to get back to the awesome fountain pen shop in Ginza, the Eurobox shop, get the pen fixed and then feature this awesome shop in the article by drawing the whole insides of the store. So here I am doing the picture and with a picture like this, it's really difficult to make it right. Okay, let me explain a bit why. If I was drawing a shop that specializes in traditional Japanese sweets, for example, and the picture was going to be published in a magazine that's completely not related to sweets or to Japan, just an article somewhere, I would be able to get away with some mistakes or simplifications or having some details just made up or uh, not everything being perfectly in the place that it's supposed to be because um, an expert in Japanese sweets will not look at this picture probably. Uh, it matters more that everything is well understood and it's nice and pretty and cute and easy to understand and the whole picture has the atmosphere that I'm aiming for. But here I'm drawing a picture of a fountain pen specialty store that has a lot of fountain pen unique paraphernalia and um, memorabilia and fountain pens themselves and posters and stuff 
And this is going to be published in a magazine that's about fountain pens. So a lot of fountain pen specialists, hobbyists, uh, interested people and people that know a lot of things about fountain pens will look at this picture and not only care about how pretty it is painted, uh, is it colorful or the atmosphere, they will care actually about the contents. And this has bad and good sides, of course, because the bad side is that I have to be really careful not to draw anything with errors. Not everything has to be as in reality, but it's good that everything holds up to the scrutiny. So that's one difficulty. But on the other hand, I can put some things, some details in this picture knowing that these details will be appreciated by the people that will see this picture because they are these specialists and hobbyists that know a lot about fountain pens. For me, it's fun always to put small details in because I just like drawing and painting these small objects here and there that make a scene feel more human and more interesting. But here it was doubly enjoyable because I knew that there will be people on the other side that will kind of get the joke and get the content. Because of that accuracy, also the piece took a long time to finish. I think I spent three days just making all the details. So it was tiring and difficult, but technically this project was really basic. I did the sketch with just pencils on watercolor paper, then used waterproof black ink with my fountain pen to do the lines and watercolors to color the whole thing. I decided to use the Schminke watercolors for this project because uh, just how much details of many colors there are in this picture in case like this, having a lot of pre-made colors in my palette helps a lot to speed the process up. I don't have to mix every color. I can use a color straight from the pan, just modify it a bit if I need to, and then move to the next thing. For the brushes, I chose to use the Escoda Perla series because these have a lot more sharper tip than some of the brushes that I usually use, perfect for small little details. Okay, I'll leave you here for the rest of the painting process and I'll meet you at the end of the video.
Okay, so this full of details picture is almost complete. I decided to omit few things like the plastic barriers that are supposed to stop coronavirus spread, but most of the things that really are in this store are there in this picture. I like how it turned out, I like the colors, and I also like how it turned out in the actual magazine. And I'm really pleased that because of this series of articles that I'm doing, I'm kind of forced to go outside of my comfort zone and do some difficult illustrations that I would not do otherwise, also featuring characters, which is a thing that I don't do really often. Okay, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. As always, feel free to comment, share and subscribe, and you can also support me on Patreon. It's your support there that allows me to spend time making these videos. See you in the next one. Bye.